Oop. And that's the battery that I've pierced. So let's just leave that alone for a minute. So in my previous video on the EliPal Titan Mini, I ended up bricking two of the devices. And look, given that EliPal is closed source in terms of their hardware and the software running on the devices, I thought this would be a great opportunity to do a teardown of one of these devices. And uh, just looking at it, the only way we're gonna be able to do that is by cutting it open. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe, and that way you can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. Now, change of scenery because we are somewhere else. This has a lithium battery in it, so cutting into it inside in an enclosed space where I normally record, bad idea. Goggles, safety visor, outdoors, let's go. All right, that's interesting. So the edge of it's actually pretty thick, so we'll just move in a bit. Okay, I can actually see the PCB through there. So let's see if we can just go around the edge of it. And that's the battery that I've pierced. So let's just leave that alone for a minute. There we go. So let's just have a look at what we've got in here. So that's now, aha. Okay, that was the battery I nicked. Okay, well, let's just take that battery out. That makes the whole thing easier to work with safely. And we'll just pop that out, put that to the side. All right, so that actually just screws onto there. So and that's the button, and that's the charging port. So let's just trim a bit more metal off so we can actually get this whole board out. I just want to unscrew it and have a look at it. Oh, geez, that's hot. <laughs> All right, let's just pop this inside. So this is the insides of it. You can see nice and clearly now, and I've actually taken the battery out and left that outside because I did nick that. Don't want to bring that down here. Basically, I've cut away all of the metal that goes around the PCB itself. And you can actually see it's a solid uh, metal. I think that's aluminium, basically where there aren't parts in there. So if you tried to cut through this part here, I'm pretty sure that is going to be a really hard time with that. But anyway, you can actually see the PCB here is sort of shaped to sort of fit into this space here. So let's just uh, see if we can whip these screws out and have a look and see if there's anything on the other side of this. So flick that up, that can come out. So let's bring this whole thing out. There we go, that's the main PCB. On the other side, we've got this RF shield and some other components. So let's have a look and see what is under here. And rather than solder that off, I'll just quickly whip that off with a Dremel as well. Okay, and so that's the main, that's the main MCU just there. Oh yeah, so this is that here. So this is all winner V831 full HD camera SOC. So it definitely looks like this is just a sort of standard uh, embedded processor running actual custom firmware in there like a normal hardware wallet rather than running full Android. The reason that's actually helpful for you as an end user is that uh, not having the full Android operating system on there means that the software attack surface for this device is actually much lower than with the original EliPal Titan. So uh, there you go, that's just something to know if you're comparing the uh, Titan Mini versus the Titan, uh, at least in this regard. Uh, it actually has a better attack surface in terms of the software, but let's keep looking. So basically, if those want a really deep dive, the next steps on this one would be to pull a chip like this out and to see whether any of the debug uh, communication or any other sort of interfaces like that are still active because occasionally these things do get left on by vendors. Okay, so what's this thing? Winbot. All right, so this chip here is just the flash memory for here. If someone else has the time and inclination to uh, go into this in more depth, uh, it'd be really interesting to see what's inside this chip here. In this instance, because this one was sacrificial, I actually already whipped the corner off that chip by accident, uh, just dremeling it open. But in normal, if you're really worried about the contents of that, you'd you know desolder this rather than just cut 
the thing open and prize it open. So let's have a look at the other side. I'm really curious to know what these other chips are. Now it looks like a D. So I managed to work out what the part number was on this, and this is actually just the touchscreen controller. So nothing really interesting there. Uh, okay, yep, now this makes sense. So this this cable here actually connected directly onto this touchscreen controller here, uh, and then that connects to the PCB through this connector here. So I inadvertently sheared that one off uh, when I was cutting it open, and that just solders directly onto this. Look at what this nation thing is. What's that? Ah, here we go. So, oh, okay, so that is a second MCU. So it's just a really basic little MCU. PWM ADC. Doesn't have much IO. Can't do anything cryptographic other than CRC. Okay, so this is just a little secondary MCU. So let's see what this is. Ah, all right, so that's that chip right there. It is a security IC, and it actually is a certified secure IC as well. Yeah, EAL5 Plus, no less. Which doesn't tell you anything about their actual implementation. So this essentially, this actually looks like a secure element. So it looks like the Ellie's Pal Titan Mini has finally uh, gone with a dedicated secure element in there. Because honestly, there's no other reason why you would put a chip like this in there. So I'm quite sure this is actually uh, where your cryptographic keys would be stored. Which is, and this is a massive step up from the Ellie's Pal Titan, which just uses the standard SOC for everything. Because it's just basically running Android. One last bit of cutting. I just want to see if I can actually get this whole plastic assembly out from the uh, aluminium case and sort of just cut around the screen and pull it out the front. So let's give that a crack. So I've just dremeled that and just cleaned it up. I was curious to see where the screen finished and where the metal started, because uh, really this whole plastic insert here should be able to just pop out uh, now that I've done that. So let's just see if we can get that out. Oh, there we go. There we are. Okay. There we go. So this is the metal frame. Ah, oh, yes, and you can see that bit that stuck out. So that's the metal frame. You've got the power button that just sort of that'll just pop out now. Oop, that's gone. And this sort of magnetic charging thing here just screws in to the metal frame there and connects through using these four spring-loaded connectors onto this pad here on the board. So basically in the factory they'd start with the metal frame, they'd put the components in and then this whole thing would just sort of shove in there and then glue down to the front. So the idea is that unless you can get this glue around the edge to let go, you can't get this thing out intact. That bottom part there is solid and so is, and there's a pretty decent thick frame around the edge of it as well. So, you know, this explains those videos where they run over this thing with a car and it's pretty much fine. And so there you go, that's what's inside. Okay, well that was an interesting exercise. Now I will reach out to EliePal and see if they have any comments they want to officially add to this. Um, I'm not sure they would want to actually disclose the internals of these devices, but anyway. There's just a few thoughts that I've got uh, having sort of ripped this device apart and had a look at it, particularly as it relates to the previous EliePal Titan. The first thought is that as I suspected when I did the review, this EliePal Titan is actually a major uh, software and hardware refresh. It's not simply a smaller version of the same software and hardware. It is fundamentally different architecture that you have here in this hardware wallet. And that because of that, the EliePal Mini has a much smaller uh, attack surface in terms of the software it's running. You know, it's not running the full Android operating system that has been locked down, but it's actually running uh, custom firmware in a similar way to a normal hardware wallet like, you know, a Trezor or a Ledger or something like that. 
So, you know, that is a plus in terms of security. Secondly, it does look like the Alipal Titan Mini has specialized hardware in there to boost the physical security of the device. You know, similar to the sort of secure elements that you would find in like a ledger, uh, a keystone, a cold card, or a bitbox or something like that. And that in itself is also a major boost in the security when compared to the previous generation of the Alipal Titan, which again, was just a phone. And to be sure, most modern mobile phones do have, uh, you know, secure enclaves and things like that and ways that a device like an Alipal can secure the private key material. But still, just having a separate dedicated chip for this specific function is a big step up in terms of security. Frankly, I'm honestly surprised that Alipal didn't make a bigger deal of this Titan Mini being a fundamentally more secure product than their original Titan. Though I suppose the challenge for them is how to promote your new product without, you know, throwing your old one under the bus in terms of the quality of security that it offered. It is also important to acknowledge that this massive change from the original Titan to the Titan Mini, I think, probably did have a lot to do with the really rocky launch that the Titan Mini had. But it does, for the most part, seem to be working reasonably well now. The big caveat with Elipal is even though you can, you know, just cut one of these open and have a look at the hardware that's running in there, uh, that the software running on the Elipal device itself, the firmware is still closed source. And, you know, for some people that will be a deal breaker. For others, they're happy just to sort of trust Elipal as a company. Really, that's something for you to decide. For the average user, one of the biggest things with the Elipal is that they sort of lock you into using their wallet software. And again, that's good if you're a newbie in that it's less likely for you to screw it up. But it also means if they have something like an outage on their system or if you are trying to use you know multiple different ethereum chains beyond what they support you know you're out of luck so if you're an advanced user this probably isn't the device you want to use unless you're wanting to use it to sweep you know old paper wallets which again is still something that i think elipal does uh, better than just about any other hardware on the market if you think an Elipal Titan Mini would be helpful to boost your security and want to help me out in the process, I've also got an affiliate link in the description where you can buy one. Likewise, if you're interested in knowing the sort of hardware I use just to cut this open, uh, both the Dremel, the safety stuff and all that, I'll also have affiliate links where you can buy that stuff on Amazon in the description as well. Otherwise, if you've got any specific questions about these devices or any other general questions, you know, just leave a reply in the comments. I do my best to reply to all of them. Thanks for watching, I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.